What's going on everybody? So today in this video, what we're gonna be going through is in Airtable, my CRM, we're gonna be messing around with primary fields, primary keys, and unique values. Specifically, I'm gonna be showing you how to change what the primary field looks like and why you might wanna change it, why you can really make it whatever you want. If you haven't met me before, my name is Ben Green. I'm the owner of Optimize IS, and I build these kinds of systems all the time for clients. If you're interested, you can go check out the link in the description and request a time to speak with me or someone on my team. Uh, but we're gonna jump right into the Airtable CRM. It's called the Optimize CRM. So what we have in here are invoices. Uh, invoices, payments, linked to companies in my CRM. Uh, this is something I'm actively building out for this channel and this table is what we're going to be tackling today. So this invoices table, I took it from my old CRM and imported it all in here into this one. And so I just have some example invoice data in here. Now, previously in my old CRM, I didn't really care a lot about the primary field in this invoices table, but it just had the Stripe invoice ID in it. And I don't really care for it. It doesn't look good. It's not descriptive. Uh, it technically functions, but I just, I don't really like it. So I want to change that to a formula. Now, one thing you can do, if you're curious, which field is the primary field in every Airtable table, it's gonna be this first field right here. If you want to click tools and then manage fields in the top right, you will see Airtable actually labels this field as the, the first field as the primary field, which I think is interesting. Now, how to change this, we'll tackle that real quick. And then later on, I'm gonna go through a few different ways to make each record unique. Because a lot of people, if you take this data and put it elsewhere, you need a unique value. And a lot of times it defaults to that first field, but it may not actually be necessary as I'll show you later. Specifically how to change this. I don't wanna lose the data in the field. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this field. And I'm gonna also du duplicate the cells. So to get to that, you just right click on the field header and duplicate that. So now we have the invoice ID. I'm gonna call that the Stripe invoice ID. And I wanna change this field to something that is unique. And I'm gonna call it the ID. Um, and we can actually call it the CRM ID. So in the CRM ID field, what I want to change it to is I wanna change it to a formula. And you'll see here it says it is the primary field, it cannot be hidden or moved, it's meant to be a short, unique representation of each record in your table. So let's just go ahead and make this unique. So if I wanna change this, say I want, some people may wanna change it into a date, I could double click on the field header, change it to a date right there. Uh, confirm the change, it shouldn't have any dates in there anymore. And I could like copy in a different field into that. Uh, I don't want to do that, I want to use a formula so formulas are almost always the way to go or the way that I go with these primary fields and they should make it descriptive. So for me, what I wanna say is I want to pull in the company name, which currently is just my email. So I wanna say, I wanna concatenate a few things together. So concatenate, what it does is it pulls together different text strings. And here you can say, yeah, if you like go into the formula, you can see it joins together different text arguments into a single value. So the key there is it's there's lots of different data types. We need to only be focusing on text. So I want to pull in the company's table or the company's linked record. So that's going to say Ben at Optimize IS. And then after that, I want to say the invoice amount, which I have over here in the invoice total. So invoice amount. So actually I want to put in a separator there. So I'm going to pull in like and if you pull in text, that's gonna be the same every time, such as a separator, it needs to be in quotes, either single or double should is fine in this instance. And then I'm also gonna put a dollar sign because invoice total is a currency, but when converting it to text, it's gonna lose the dollar sign. So I'm going to say, pull in the invoice total and then the status as well. That's gonna be the last thing that I pull in. So I'm gonna put another comma, another separator, and then the status. Confirm that change. 
Now we can make this bigger. We can see, okay, Ben, this amount, and it's the status is paid in these examples or draft in these examples. So that is how to change it. We've made it a formula. You can make it a date. And now this will be show up. This will show up in any like linked records when you're picking from this table. Uh, this is mainly useful when using like forms or other places where you're like, need to see this, see what this says. It should be unique. Uh, so if I really wanted to make this unique, I would also include the pay date or the send date. Uh, Cause obviously mo many of these are not unique anymore. So if I wanted to make it unique, if I wanted to include a date here, I would say include that other separator. If I just pull in the pay date, it's going to make it look really ugly. So watch this. That looks terrible. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to format that using a date time format. Cause basically what that just did, cause connect concatenate only use text converts that date into a text string, which is why it just looks terrible. So you need to use like date time format, a formula. So date time format, I copied that field. So I'm going to paste it. And then I'm going to say, there's a resource online. You can also watch my date time format formula video. If you search it on YouTube, uh, or you can learn how to format this. There's a bunch of like date time formats, unit specifiers as well. There's an Airtable resource on that. In this case, I'm just going to put in quotes, the letter L, which I think should give us a good format. Sweet. All right. Now that we got that out of the way, that's how you change that field. Uh, actually, before we do that, we have errors here. So I want it's erroring because there's no pay date in some of these examples. So what I'm going to do is after status, I don't want to include the separator and I don't want to error the formula at the date if there's no date. So I'm going to take those out and I'm going to say, use an if statement. So I'm going to say if pay date, then I'm going to paste those back in and I'm going to change the comma to a and sign. And now it looks fine for these now. Sweet. So that's how you change that first field. You can become an expert at formulas and figure out how to, how you want that formatted. This is just one example. Now the primary field, one of the things it says about it is it's supposed to make it unique. Now there's other ways to make it unique. Like one way is to use a concatenation formula like this. Airtable itself has its own way of making it unique that you do not need to worry about. So if you're exporting this data and you're like, why can't I get a good primary field that like every record is unique? Because in this example, I could have two invoices to the same customer paid on the same date for the same invoice amount. Um, it's definitely happened before. And so what I want to include, what I want to show you is that Airtable has its own, like what I think it considers a primary key. So if you add a formula field and you type record, you'll see record ID right here. And I'm just going to call this dev record ID. So Airtable has a 17 character string that it considers the record ID. Uh, this is guaranteed to make every single record in this table unique. And it's awesome. I use this most of the time as uh, a field that I consider where I say it makes every record unique. There's one other way that Airtable has internally to consider every record unique that requires no work of you other than adding the field. And that is called an auto number field. So the auto number field just adds one incrementally for every record. So in this case, you can see some of them are larger, even though I have this, I have this view filtered, which is why this, uh, one thing to note with this is it will, if you like delete a record and you, if, yeah, if you delete a record, that ID will just never show up ever again. So if I delete the first record ID, number one will never show up again. It will just add a new record forever until you get to 50,000 records or a hundred thousand records in your table, which is the limit. So that's how you change the primary key. And these are two other ways where you can make it unique. Uh, other, my last way is just importing a unique value. So I have this Stripe invoice ID that is actually unique, but not everything I have is from Stripe. So I don't want to rely on that. So those are just a few different tidbits about the primary field in an Airtable table. Let me know in the, uh, the, the comments section, if you have any questions on that, uh,
but I hope this was helpful. I'll add in the end screen here, that date time format video. So if you want to learn more about how to use that date time format formula, you can click this video right here in the end screen and it'll take you right there. So I'll see you in that video and have a great day.